Gosh. The Congo. Country. <laughs> so, You're not well. country. No, really? What I was going to say is that um, I was first exposed to the Congo through Robin. Mm-hmm. Let's go this way. And, um, you know, she came to me just in tears because she was so upset about an Oprah episode that she had seen that really showcased the human rights violations, particularly with women um, that were going on over there. And we began to have these conversations about how much we take for granted here. Yeah. Um, you know, that it's so sad that there, that the lack of stability has allowed for those sorts of things to happen to people on a daily basis. And uh, we just felt so powerless. You know, we, we get so entrenched in the way that we live here, we don't think about you know, what other people go through. And then once you become aware, this is what I was talking about a minute ago with the students, you just become so overwhelmed. You know, what can I do? What can I do? Yeah. Now, I will tell you this, Kambali. I noticed this year versus last year, there seems to be a really um, succinct and purposeful message you have about what you want to see. Yeah. I saw the steps. You know, I saw um, your appeal, you know, what you want us to do in terms of Obama. Um, and the things that you hope to accomplish. And I shared that with my students because they don't understand the power that resides in being an American citizen. Exactly. You know, they don't get it. They don't They don't know who their representatives are. They don't know how to write letters to those folks. They don't understand what their vote means. Um, and we need a perspective shift there. And um, I think, you know, after I talked to them about your perspective on the United States um, and your ideas about what we could do to help the people of the Congo, I think that they were... Um, actually thinking of themselves in a different way and that's certainly our, our goal when we expose students to things. We want their perspective, perspectives to shift but we also want them to not just learn facts but learn about themselves. Exactly. So, exactly. that's my piece. So when are you taking the students uh, to the Congo? <laughs> as soon as I can raise the money to do that, we'll go. You know, we did have a group of students who went, um, and I can't even think of which African country it was, now, but we had a group of nursing students who went to um, get exposed to another culture and learn how to practice um, traditional medicine in a, uh, or non-traditional to that tra- tradition, I guess, um, but medicine that was traditional in their sense with another culture, and that was an amazing thing. Where did uh, Brenda take the students? Do you remember? I, I want to say Ghana, but I don't know. But maybe I know that Brenda Lewis went to Ghana. She did? Oh. Maybe that was what I'm thinking. Yeah, Brenda Step. I'm not sure, but actually, <laughs> I say that to say that there, the precedent has been set for international travel, okay. um, particularly in African countries. Because, And we also have a... Actually, we may have a, a, a couple from Ghana here tonight. Okay. That's interesting, but... So it's going to be a great event. Yes, I think so. All right. How did you get introduced to the Congo? I became aware of the Congo um, after I saw an Oprah episode with uh, journalist Lisa Ling and um, she, I I remember a lady that she interviewed and her name was uh, Nabito and she, um, I remember her arm, her arm would, it was like it had been broken and it would move like this, it was just so the way that her arm rotated around um, was because she had been beaten half to death and uh, raped so many times and she talked about it and she talked about her son and her daughter and um, it just I just couldn't stand it I mean it just um, moved me and I'll be honest with you I did not know where the Congo I couldn't have pointed to Congo on a map Mm. before that um I mean, I'm ashamed to say that, but I couldn't. And then when I saw this, I immediately, I don't know, I just kind of, something happened and um, I talked with, I talked about it with my son and with my husband and I found out where it was. <laughs> and and then I, I decided to, um, to sponsor a sister and I got my first Congolese sister through Women for Women and um, we began writing and and then I discovered what another lady had done. She ran 30 miles and raised all this money for 80 sisters. So I decided to do the same thing. And I ran 12 miles and raised about $1,400. And um, I've been, 
I, I've been doing it ever since. And and I, I guess the the main thing I can say is that that the Congo and the Congolese, these women, have totally rearranged my life. Because mm. they're kind of I think about them before in in things that I do. Yeah. And and so it's really. Um, it's become second nature to me to think about them and yeah. to want to do things for them. And So what, do you, what are you doing today? Um, today I'm going to hear you speak. <laughs> 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 and um, I, um, I'm working on my next run next year and okay. I'm doing a research paper on it. And if you tell one person, that person tells somebody else on my campus, people didn't know anything about it. I'm mm -hmm. doing my research project on it. And um, it's the words getting out there. Okay, so. breaking the silence. Yeah. <laughs>